People of the Champ Geo Vlog, we are back. It is the first video of 2021. We hope everybody had a happy new year, happy holiday season. Um, for the first video of 2021, I want to do something a little different. So today is going to be uh, an informative, informational type video. So one thing I wanted to go over, and I've wanted to go over for a long time because I get a lot of questions about it, is color genetics. Color genetics is something that's fun to learn about. It's interesting. It's important um, to know your dog's color genetics when you may be trying to put dogs together to do a breeding or determine what colors you can get from a certain litter. So I want to go over that. And uh, a lot of people are getting their dogs embarked nowadays or using a different service to get the color genetics uh, behind their dog. So I just wanted to put out a video that'll give you the foundation and the basic skills you need to understand and read your dog's um, color genetic DNA analysis. With that being said, let's get into it. But before we do, start your new year off right. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, like the video, and drop a comment. We really appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. So let's get into it. Alright, so the genetics or the genes that determine a dog's coat color or coat patterns are called locuses. And those locuses are broken down into alleles. Some people call them alleles, alleles. I call them alleles. So if you call them alleles, I apologize in advance. <laughs> so there are seven different types of main locuses. They are the A locus, the B locus, the D locus, the E locus, the K locus, M locus, and S locus. Each locus has a different variant known as an allele, and the combination of the different locus ally determine a dog's coat color and which patterns are expressed, and which coat colors and which pattern your dog is more likely to produce when bred. Certain allies within the locus are more dominant than others, and they will also determine your dog's coat color or which patterns are expressed. So we'll get into the seven locuses right now and all the different alleles, and uh, we'll talk about... Uh, what locuses are responsible for which colors and which patterns and the role that their alleles play and which is more dominant than others and the combinations that can be produced um, when you combine them. All right, before we get into the locuses and the different alleles, I just want to say something that'll make it easier as I talk so you understand what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about the different combination of alleles, you might hear me say like A-T-A-T, uh, A-Y-A-T, uh, -A -T, A -A -T, things like that. So what I'm saying when I say that is I'm, I'm talking about the the alleles that it received from each parent. So a dog will receive an allele of a certain locus from its mother and from its father. So a father can give um, an AT allele and the mother can give an AY allele. So that dog will be ATAY. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the different combinations of alleles. Um, when you hear me say something slash something, it can, it's the combination of both genes that the dog received from its mother and father. So that just makes it a little simpler when we uh, talk about the alleles and the different combinations moving forward. So we'll get into it right now and we'll start with the K locus. So the K locus is known as the dominant black gene and has three different types of alleles. The KB, the KBR, and the KY. The dominance of the alleles follows the order in which I just listed them. KB is the most dominant, KBR being more dominant than KY. So KY is obviously the least dominant of all three alleles. But the main thing you'll see when we get into it a little deeper is that the K locus is responsible for letting those patterns that the A locus uh, produces either shine through or if they uh, if they hide them. So let's go by uh, one by one. Uh, we'll start with the KB. So the KB, it's the dominant black allele and is actually a mutation that reduces or eliminates the expression of the A locus. That's just what I was talking about before. Because this mutation is dominant, a dog only needs to have one copy of the mutation to affect or hide the A locus. So, therefore, if a dog is KBKB, meaning it has two copies of the uh, dominant KB allele, or if the dog is KB slash N, meaning it only has one copy of the dominant black allele, the A locus gene will be affected or hidden, and the dog will be solid black depending on the D locus, which is responsible for coat dilution. We'll get into the D locus a little bit later. So what you can take from the KB gene is that, um, that it's responsible for hiding or masking the A locus patterns that the A locus wants to express, and it's responsible for making the dog black. So now we'll talk about the KBR allele. This is known as the Brindle gene. The KBR allele is a separate mutation that allows the A locus to be expressed. However, the expression causes the brindling of the A locus patterns. 
because the KB allele is more dominant than the KBR allele. Like we said before, KB, uh, KB is the most dominant of the three allele. The dog is KB slash KBR, meaning it has one copy of the dominant black KB gene and one copy of the less dominant KBR gene. The A locus will be affected or hidden, and the brindling pattern will not be present because the KB is more dominant and it takes over that KBR gene, so the KBR gene won't be expressed. The A locus will be hidden or affected. Now let's say your dog is KBR slash N or KBR slash KBR, meaning your dog has either one or two copies of the Brendelin KBR allele and no copies of the KB dominant black allele. That means the A locus allele will be allowed to be expressed just with a brindling pattern associated with them. So if your dog is KBR slash KBR or N slash KBR and your dog is also AT slash AT at the A locus, that means your dog will have the genetic tri pattern. It will also just be brindle. So that KBR allowed the A locus to come through, but it just uh, it just also put its brindling stamp on it. So that's how the KBR and the A locus work together. Now. The last, the least uh, dominant of these three allele groups is the KY. So the KBR gene was responsible for letting the A locus gene be presented, but with a brindle pattern, the KY allele lets the A locus be uh, presented or visible with no effect or mutation to it at all. So if the dog is KY, KY, meaning it has two copies of the recessive KY allele, then the A locus is allowed to determine the dog's coat color and pattern. Because the KY allele is the least dominant of the K locuses, if a dog is KBKY, meaning it has one dominant black gene, one recessive KY gene, or if the dog is KBR slash KY, meaning it has one brindling pattern gene, which is more dominant than the recessive KY gene, the dog will not express the A locus pattern, or if it has the KBR slash KY gene, it will express the A locus pattern, but with the brindling. So, to simplify that, if the dog is KB slash KY, dog is dominant black. If the dog is KBR slash KY, the A locus will allow to be expressed. It just will also be brindle. So that's the uh, breakdown of that. So those are the three alleles of the K locus. Uh, I'll put the chart up for you with the different combinations so you can see the different possibilities when all these alleles are mixed together and what you can expect um, the dog's coat color and patterns to be when you have the different combination of these alleles. All right, since we talked about the K locus now, it's time to move on to the A locus. We talked about the K locus and what it does to affect the A locus in terms of hiding it, masking it, or altering it. So now let's get into the A locus. So the A locus has four different types of alleles. That's AY, AW, AT, and A. And again, the dominance of this allele follows that order, with AY being the most dominant, AW being more dominant than AT, and AT being more dominant than A, and A obviously being the least dominant of all of them, and it won't dominate anything. So let's start with AY. The AY allele is the most dominant of all four of the A locuses, and the AY gene produces a range of coat colors like light fawn, darker red colors, or even sable. So if a dog is AY, AY, AY slash AW, AY slash AT or AY slash A, the dog is going to express the colors that the AY allele wants it to because it's more dominant than any of those other alleles. The wild type. This will only be expressed if the dog is AW slash AW, meaning it has two copies, one from the mother, one from the father of the AW allele, or if it's AW slash AT, or if it's AW slash A. AW again is more dominant than AT, AW is more dominant than A, so if it's paired with an A gene, or a uh, AT allele, the AW is more dominant, therefore the wild type color will be expressed over the AT and the A. So next on the list is the ever so sought after and the beautiful AT allele. So this is a big one for all my people in the bully community with the tribe bullies and the different colors uh, and the tribe patterns on the overlay of the different coat colors. So this is a big thing. It obviously exists in other breeds. You see uh, pit bulls with um, the the tri points, you see Rottweilers with the tri points, you know, you even see some German Shepherds with the tri points. So this is this is a big one for the for all my bully followers. So the AT, this allele is responsible for the tricolor and the black and tan phenotypes. With that being said, it is important to note that the tricolor is not just having three different coat colors on a dog. The tan points located on a tri dog's eyebrows, jaws, chest, and legs is the genetic pattern. 
The reason I say this or it's important to highlight this is because I see people get confused. They think a tricolor dog is just a dog that has three different colors on its coat. Doesn't matter where, doesn't matter how, as long as it has three colors, it's a try. Uh, I see the confusion a lot of times within the uh, fawn sable dog. A dog might be fawn, black, and white, and they think because it has the three different colors on the coat that it's a try. It's not the case. The try, what we call try, is a genetic pattern. It's not just having three colors on the dog's coat. So you'll see the genetic pattern show up on the eyebrows, the jaw, the legs, and the chest. And that is uh, due to the AT allele. So it is important to note that the tri color is not, it's not a color. It's not just showing three colors. It's actually a genetic pattern that is responsible and happens through the combination of the AT allele. So if you look at the dog's A locus and you see two AT alleles, meaning the dog is AT, AT, the dog will have the genetic uh, tri pattern. I like to say genetic pattern so people don't get confused. Again, like I said, and think it's just having three colors. So last but not least, we'll talk about the A allele. The A allele is responsible for recessive black. It's known as recessive black because this black coloration will only happen if you have two A alleles present. There's no AY, there's no AT, and there's no AW because if those were present, it would dominate that uh, A allele and the black coloration wouldn't be expressed. So that's why it's known as recessive black, whereas like something like the last locus we went over, KB, that's dominant black. It doesn't matter what's paired with that that dominates, it'll always be black. With this A allele recessive black, it needs to have two copies of that and nothing else be present in the A locus for it to be expressed. So now that we know everything we know about the K alleles and the A alleles, we can sum it up like this. In order for any of the A allele patterns to be expressed properly, meaning the AY with the fawns and the darker reds and the fawn sables, or the AW with the wild type, the AT with the uh, trigenetic pattern, or the A, which is recessive black, the K alleles have to allow it to come through. Meaning, if a dog is KB slash N or KB slash KB, meaning it has one or two copies of the dominant black gene, doesn't matter what those A locus and A alleles do, the A locus will not be expressed. You can have ATAT, AYAT, AWAT, no matter what you have. If you have one or two copies of the uh, KB allele, those A locuses and A alleles will not be expressed. Now, let's say your dog is in KBR or KBR slash KBR, meaning your dog has one or two copies of the Brendeling KBR allele. Those A locus alleles will allow to be expressed, but they will just be altered with a Brendeling pattern. Now let's say your dog is KY slash KY or N slash KY, meaning it has one or two copies of the recessive KY gene with no Brendeling uh, allele and no dominant black KB allele. The A locus allele will be allowed to be expressed properly. So if your dog is N slash KY or KY slash KY, you go to the A locus and you see you have AT slash AT, meaning you have two alleles for the tri, uh, tri genetic pattern that trigenetic pattern will be expressed properly. You'll see the tan points nice and clear. If your dog is AY slash AY with the two KY uh, recessive uh, alleles, the fawn will be allowed to be expressed, the darker reds will be allowed to be expressed. If your dog is KY slash KY or N slash KY, the AW wild type coat will allow to be expressed. So. To sum it up, what I'm trying to say is in order to get these A locus alleles to come through and the patterns that they uh, the patterns that they are associated with to come through, you want to either be N slash KY or KY slash KY. That's your best bet. With that genetic pattern, there's no Brendeling allele, there's no dominant black allele, the A locuses will be allowed to do their thing. If you have a KBR, which is the Brendeling allele, mixed with the KY, the KBR, the KBR allele is more dominant, so that's gonna take over and it's gonna brindle your A locus patterns. Now, if you have KB anywhere, just one, or if you have two of them, it's going to mask all of those A locus alleles, no matter what. You can have one dominant KB allele, it's going to mask all the A locuses, no matter what pattern or what combination they are. So that's how the K locus and the A locus affect each other. All right, so now that we've covered the K locus and the A locus, let's move on to the B locus. So the B locus is based on the TYRP1 gene, which causes the darkening of the dog's pigment color, creating a black or brown coat, or we call it chocolate <laughs> in the bully world. So 
This locust has two alleles, capital B, lowercase b, with capital B being more dominant over lowercase b. So the B allele, uh, if your dog has one copy of the B allele or two copies of the B allele, your dog is more likely to have a black pigment as opposed to the brown or chocolate coat. So that means if your dog is B slash B or N slash B, meaning it has one or two copies of the dominant capital B allele, it's more likely to have the black pigment over the brown or the chocolate. Now, if your dog has two copies of the recessive B allele, meaning your dog is B slash B, the dog is more likely to express a brown or chocolate pigment. So if your dog is capital B slash lowercase b, meaning it has one copy of the dominant B allele, one copy of the recessive B allele, your dog is going to have a black pigment coat. Now if your dog is recessive lowercase b slash recessive lowercase b, it's more likely to have the brown or the chocolate pigment. So that's what the B locust controls. So now that we've covered the B locus, let's talk about the D locus. So as you'll see as we get into it, the D locus is not necessarily responsible for certain type of coat colors and pigment colors. It affects and goes hand in hand with what the other locuses are doing to alter the shades and the colors of which uh, those different locuses are expressed. So the D locus is based on the MLPH gene, which is responsible for transporting and fixing melanin containing cells. A mutation in this gene leads to improper distribution of these cells, causing a dilute coat color. The mutation causing color dilution is recessive, and two copies of the mutated gene are needed to produce the diluted coat color. So again, just like with the other locuses, this D locus has different uh, dominant and recessive alleles, and you need certain combinations of them to get certain things, as you'll see. So the D locus has three alleles, which is uppercase D, lowercase D, and uh, D2. D being dominant over D and D being dominant over D2. So if your dog has one or two copies of the dominant capital D allele, meaning your dog is capital D slash capital D or capital D slash D or capital D slash D2, the dog will not have a dilute coat color. So capital D is the dominant D allele. And if you have one or two copies of this gene, your dog will not have a dilute coat color. It will be the base coat color. So that's how that gets affected. Now, if your dog has two copies of the recessive D allele, meaning your dog is D slash D, the dog will have a dilute coat color. So the recessive lowercase D allele affects black, brown slash chocolate, and yellow coat colors. Two copies of the lowercase D allele will dilute the black coat to what we call blue. It will dilute a brown slash chocolate coat to what we call lilac and will dilute a yellow coat to champagne. So if your dog has two copies of the lowercase d allele, that's how it affects the base coat colors. So if your dog has uh, you know, has the genetic makeup to be black, but it has two copies of the recessive lowercase d allele, it will be blue. If, it had, if your dog has the genetic makeup to be chocolate or brown, but it has two copies of the lowercase d allele, then that will dilute that color to lilac. If your dog has the genetic makeup to be yellow or uh, show a yellow coat color, but it has two copies of this recessive lowercase d allele, it'll dilute that to champagne. So as times go on, as things progress, science gets better, they can test for new things. And now there is a test for a second recessive mutation affecting the dilution of coat color, which is known as the D2 allele. This mutation was identified in a number of dog breeds where individual dogs had a dilute coat color, yet tested non-dilute, meaning they were a dilute coat color, either blue, lilac, champagne, something along those lines, but the test didn't show any results for uh, the lowercase recessive D allele. So the additional variation works with the MLPH variant to dilute hair and skin in the same way as the recessive lowercase D allele. Uh, therefore, a dilute dog can either be D lowercase D slash lowercase D or lowercase D slash lowercase D2 or lowercase D2 slash lowercase D2. So lowercase D2 acts just the same way as lowercase d. Both of them recessive, both of them will be um, overpowered by the dominant capital D allele. So next up is the E locus. The E locus is responsible for determining if the dog is more likely to have a black coat, a yellow coat, or a red coat. Uh, and it's also responsible for determining if the dog is gonna have a black mask on their face. This locus has three alleles, capital E, lowercase e, and capital E, capital M, with capital E and capital EM being dominant to lowercase e. If a dog has two copies or one copy of the dominant capital E allele, 
meaning it's capital E slash capital E or capital E slash capital E-M or capital E slash lowercase e, the dog will have a black coat. Now, if the dog has two copies or one copy of the dominant E-M allele, meaning capital E-M slash capital E-M or capital E slash capital E-M or capital E-M slash lowercase e, the dog is more likely to have a black mask on their face. So just like I talked about with the capital E um, allele, I also mentioned E slash capital E slash capital E-M, the dog is more likely to have a black coat. The only reason I didn't mention um, the black mask on the face is because if the dog is already black, the black mask is not really going to be noticeable, even though its genetic phenotype says, hey, this is a black mask, the dog's already black, so you really don't see the black mask as being a black mask. It's just a black face with a black coat. Now, if your dog is capital E-M slash lowercase e, you know, that's when the dog is less likely to be black, so therefore the dog's face will still be black and you'll see, and you'll call that the black mask. Now, if the dog has two copies of the recessive E allele, meaning the dog is uh, lowercase e slash lowercase e, with no capital E-M or no capital E allele being present, the dog is going to have a yellow or red coat color. So those are the breakdown of the alleles of that E locus and how they affect each other and what you can expect when you have those uh, combinations and matchups. Now to tie some information in, go back to what we just said before with the D locus and the dilution of the coat colors. If you have a yellow recessive uh, lowercase e slash lowercase e and you have also two recessive lowercase d slash lowercase d, the dog is going to be champagne. So if you didn't have those dilute colors and you had the um, two recessive lowercase e alleles, the dog will be yellow. But if you have the two lowercase recessive dilute d alleles, it dilutes it to champagne. So just tying it back in a little bit so your mind can start to wrap around how these things work and how they play and how they go along with each other. Now the M locus has no other alleles besides just M. And the M locus is responsible for the marrow pattern. The marrow gene creates mottled patches of skin in a solid or piebald coat, and it also creates blue or mismatched eye colors. It also affects skin pigment. Dogs that are double marrow, meaning they have two copies of the M allele, are predominantly white and may be prone to several health issues such as hearing and vision deficiencies. The M locus does not have a recessive allele like the other locuses. Like I said before, there's only one allele associated with the M locus and that's dominant capital M. Um, but there is what there's called a cryptic marrow. A cryptic marrow is a dog that does not appear to be marrow but still contains the uh, capital M allele. When a marrow dog is bred to a cryptic marrow, they can produce double marrows that become prone or at risk for the health issues previously mentioned. So like we just said, the M locus only has one allele, and that's capital M, and that's dominant. Your dog only needs one capital M allele to show marrow or be a cryptic marrow. So that's how that works. So last but not least, we'll move on to the S locus. The S locus is responsible for determining the amount of white that will be expressed on a dog's coat. And like the M locus, the S locus does not have a recessive allele. There's only one allele associated with this locus, and that's capital S. Um, so the locus has no recessive trait. A dog can just have one copy of the capital S allele, two copies of the capital S allele, or no copies of the capital S allele. Dogs with two copies of the capital S allele are more likely to be piebald or have a limited coat color, with the majority of their coat being white. Dogs with one copy of the S allele are more likely to have a random coat color deletion, meaning that the dog will have patches or patterns of white in their coat. This coat color deletion is called random because there's just no way to know what section of the dog's coat will have white on it and what sections of the coat will be affected. Dogs that have no S allele are less likely to have random coat color deletion, but other unidentified causes of coat color deletion may still exist. The S locus um, gives you a pretty good idea of... Uh, if your dog is going to have uh, coat color deletion or if there's, uh, the dog is going to be mainly white or piebald, but there's other factors that are still unknown that cause random coat color deletion and cause your dog to be white. So now as you'll see, we have Sincere's coat color test results on the screen. We'll go over it one by one, all the different locuses, and uh, we'll see how what we just said kind of all plays together. So keep in mind, Sincere is a blue and white dog with uh, some ticking on his paws and on his nose, also a little bit on his neck. So we'll see how all these things play together to make Sincere the color that he is.
So we'll start right at the top. We'll start first with the A locus and the AY allele. As you'll see, he is N slash AY. That means he has one copy of the AY allele, and that's the gene responsible for the fawn slash sable in color of the coat. So he has one AY allele. We go down to the second column, which is still the A locus and the AT allele. So you'll see he's N slash AT, meaning he has one copy of the tricolor genetic pattern gene. So he has one copy of that, one copy of the fawn sable allele. So one copy AY, one copy AT. So then we go down to the third column and you look at the lowercase a allele, the recessive black allele, which we talked about before. You'll see it is N slash N, meaning the dog does not carry the gene responsible for recessive black coat color, meaning he will not be black and he will never pass a lowercase a allele down to his offspring because he does not uh, have any. So now if we do his A locus wrap up, his A locus would be represented as AY slash AT, meaning he has one copy of the AY allele and one copy of the AT allele. And as we know from the video, AY is more dominant than AT. So, uh, but he has a 50-50% chance of passing down either an AY allele or an AT allele to his offspring. So now we'll move on to the B locus. As you'll see, Sincere is uppercase B slash lowercase B, meaning he has one copy of the dominant black pigment B allele and one copy of the recessive lowercase B allele, which is more responsible for chocolate. So dog carries a copy of the alleles responsible for brown color and can potentially pass that allele to future offspring. So based on Sincere's capital B slash lowercase B, he's supposed to have a black pigment. Um, when it comes to the offspring, he has the possibility of passing down a uh, dominant capital B allele or a recessive lowercase b allele. Now we get into the D locus of Sincere and you'll see he is a recessive lowercase d slash recessive lowercase d. Um, this means Sincere is going to be a dilute coat color. And the dog is homogeneous for the dilution gene. The dog will always pass on a copy of the dilution gene to any of the offspring. So to tie it all in together, I'm going to skip down to the K locus right here, and you'll see he is N slash KB, meaning he has one copy of that dominant black KB allele. And like we said before, with the K locus and the A locus, the K locus uh, determines if the A locus is going to be expressed or not. Now, because he has one dominant black allele, like we said in the, uh, before in the video, all you need is one, um, that is going to mask anything the A locus is trying to do. So you see he's AY slash AT, um, meaning that if it wasn't for that one dominant KB allele, he would more likely be, uh, more likely than not be Fawn Sable. But because he has the one KB dominant black allele, doesn't matter what that A locus is doing, that calls for his coat color to be black, along with his uh, dominant capital B slash lowercase recessive B, that also calls for his pigment to be black. But because he is lowercase d slash lowercase d, meaning he's recessive, uh, he has two recessive dilute genes. It takes that black and turns it to blue. So hopefully it's all starting to tie together. You see his results right here. You see Sincere is a blue dog. This is why he's blue. And this is why he's not Fawn Sable. And this is why, you know, he's considered a tri-carrier. So hopefully it's all starting to come together now. So now if we go back up to the E locus, you'll see he is uppercase slash uppercase E. That means the dog does not carry the gene responsible for yellow coat color. The dog will never pass on the allele for yellow coat color. So now if we go ahead up and we look at the EM allele, um, you'll see he has N slash N, meaning he does not carry the allele uh, responsible for the melanistic mask, meaning he does not have the possibility uh, to have that black mask. Um, he will never pass down an EM allele, obviously because he does not have one. So that's what that's saying. Now, if we go to the S allele, he has one copy of the S allele, which is responsible for that random coat color deletion, which is why he has the white on his chest, white on his face, white on his nose. Now there's other things that can be responsible for that white happening, but he has, and it's identified that he has that capital S allele. So we know that's definitely gonna play a role in terms of uh, doing the random coat color deletion and having white on him. So. As you see, he's a carrier and he may or may not, so he has that 50-50 shot of passing down that S allele to his offspring. And this is how Sincere's um, coat color test uh, 
panned out. This is his locust phenotype, and this is how I know everything that I know about him, and this is how I can predict um, what color his offspring will be, depending on the female that he's paired up with. And uh, it's just really cool to be able to do this and see this and see everything at work and see how everything you talk about all comes into play and how, you know, the proof is in the pudding. Sincere is the color, and he has the patterns that his uh, locust phenotype says he should. You know, so it's really cool to see that and really cool to be able to do that. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative. I hope there's something you can take away or you can pull from it. Hopefully you have a better understanding of uh, the locust phenotypes now and how they play a role in your dog's uh, patterns and coat colors and what they're able to produce and possible litters and puppies, what colors and patterns they might be. So I hope you liked the video. I hope you liked the format. If you want me to keep doing these or if you want uh, me to keep doing these and have any ideas or you want uh, me to cover a specific topic, Make sure you comment it below. Uh, make sure you like the video. Again, subscribe, hit that bell. It really helps me out. Also, if you guys have any further questions on this locust phenotype stuff or the allio stuff, or if you got your dog uh, color coat test results and you want help reading it, feel free to message me on Instagram at sincere.geo. I'll put it right below. You can go to my Instagram page. You can DM me. I answer messages there. I help you read your dog's coat color test results. Or if you have uh, questions about what colors future litters or future um, future litters might produce, or if you pair your dog with this kind of dog, what colors the puppies may be, um, I'm more than willing to help you with that. So just shoot me a message. Again, at sincere. Dot geo on Instagram. Look forward to hearing from you, and uh, you guys just have a great 2021, and uh, we'll be back soon, all right?